Okay, in this video we're going to negate a biconditional statement. Now, a biconditional statement, of course, says P if and only if, it's a you write if with two F's, it's a fancy way of doing it, Q, which means what? Well, then that means P if and only if Q. This is often how it's written. So let me clear this off, actually. So P if and only if Q. And what you have to think about what this means is that it means one is true if and only if the other one is true. They're connected. So another way of writing this is to say it means if P is true, then Q is true. And it also means that if Q is true, then P is true. You can see how this conditional statement goes both ways, hence the phrase biconditional, right? Two conditions, and both must be met. So here, there's a way to negate this statement, right? We're going to negate P if and only if Q. And what happens here? Well, let me work you through the steps and then show you in a truth table that, that, that this actually does make sense. Um, so negating P then Q, we'll break this down piece by piece. So the first thing to realize is that what we're actually going to negate is this larger statement up here. Right, we're gonna sorry about that. We're gonna negate this statement up here. So we're negating if P then Q and we're negating Q then P. Right? We're negating this whole this entire thing. So actually here we're gonna use um, a little bit of De Morgan's law, which which is something I've gone over in other videos, to understand how we can break this down. Because in in a way we're we're gonna be distributing this not sign. So what we're doing is distributing it, right? So the first term, in a sense, is this piece right here. So we distribute it, so we get not P, then Q. And you want to leave it like this. Let me fix that Q. And then we distribute it to the N sign, and that becomes an OR sign. And then we distribute it to this last term right here, Q, then P. So notice I'm just distributing it, I'm not applying it yet, right? Okay, so right there I use a little bit of De Morgan's Law by distributing out this negation sign and reversing the end to an OR. And now we're going to negate, negate conditionals. And what happens there? Well, P then Q becomes what? Well, it becomes P and not Q, which is something we can also prove through logic tables. The OR statement is still there, right? And then here we get what? Well, again, the first part is untouched, just like it was before. P remains P and Q remains Q. But the conditional becomes an end statement. And just like before, we negated the second part, which was Q. Q went from Q to not Q. Now P also goes to not, not P. So this is, in fact, logically equivalent to negating a biconditional. And this is, I think, if you could just think about the steps, how we got here. That's how I usually work my way to it. But to, to understand a little bit more what's happening, I think it's nice to make a little logic table. So let's say we have P and Q. I'm going to crunch the table right over here. Right? They could both be true, P and Q. One could be true, the other could be false. We could reverse that, false then true, or they could both, both be false. So a biconditional statement says that P if and only if Q. So what does that mean? That means that if P and Q are true, then it's true. If one is false, then it's false. And what happens if they're both false? Well, this is something I'm often tempted to memorize myself, but remember that P, if and only if Q, means this up here. P then Q, and Q then P. So P and Q are false, right? Remember with a conditional statement, if you start with a false presumption, if P is false, it doesn't matter what Q is, it's still true. Because a conditional statement only knows what to conclude when you start with a true statement. Starting with a false statement doesn't give you anything. You don't know what to conclude. So in other words, if P and Q are both false, that means that in the biconditional, both starting terms are false. Which means that whatever Q or P are, it doesn't really matter, these are both true statements. Starting with false statements, you don't know what to conclude. Anything could be true. So it's really a true and a true, which is true. So what you could remember here is that with a biconditional, if you have two false statements, it's still true. But this, this is besides the point. We're trying to negate this. So negation of P if and only if Q, right? 
which means essentially we're getting the opposite results. So we get a false, a true, a true, and a, and a false, the opposite of what we have here. We want to know, is this really the same thing as this piece right here? Okay, so I just moved my table over real quick. Sorry about that. I wanted to make room for this. And first we need to negate P and negate Q because um, if we're going to evaluate this statement down here and show that it's, it is equivalent to the negation of the biconditional, we've got to write out what not P and not Q are because you can see they're being used in both cases. So not P is just the opposite of P. It's false, false, true, true. And not Q is the opposite of what we had before for Q. So I'm just reversing those values. So that gives me false, true, false, true. And we want to evaluate P and, excuse me, not Q. So P and not Q. So our first P value, change colors, is true. And not Q is false. In end statement, they both have to be true in order for it to be true. This is false. The next one's true. And then false and false. Now we can move on to our second statement here, Q and not P. Q and not P. So now we need to evaluate Q and not P. So Q is true to begin with and not P is false. True and oops, true and false statement is false. So this is false. Next we have a false and a false, which is false. And then we have a true and a true, which is true. And then we have a false and a true, which is false. So now the last step is, I'm just going to write a star up here. It's much quicker than rewriting this thing right here, is combining these two in a, in a disjunction, an or statement. So one or the other or both are true, which means that when we look at our values, false or false, none of them are true, so it's false. But if one of them is true, like here, true or false, it's true. And the same in the next. And the last, of course, is false. Now, have we shown what we need to? Yes. This and the negation of the biconditional are indeed equal. They give the same truth values, which I feel like is the best way of explaining that these things are equivalent to show they give the same results in all scenarios. It's much better, I think, than coming up with a lot of the typical um, analogies people come up with for these different truth statements. Although we could do that, I feel like that's a little bit more difficult to work with. Here, when you're looking at this kind of logic, if you show in all cases that these things are equal, then they're equal, right? That's the way we can look at this. All right, so I hope that helped. Thanks.